Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Arizona. Diamondbacks back home in the Valley after a long road trip through Miami and then Denver. The first place Arizona Diamondbacks back home here this weekend to open a five-game homestand. We'll play five games in four days here, starting tonight with the first of three against the San Diego Padres. There it is. It might be this way all year long. A three-way tie for the lead atop the National League West. The Diamondbacks on top at 26-21 and 21 with the Giants and the Rockies. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brunley along the way. The Diamondbacks set tonight for the first of three against the San Diego Padres. And, Bob, we get a look here at Brandon McCarthy. He has been a sensation late eight scoreless innings here against the Phillies in his last start at Chase Field and then at uh, Miami against the Marlins over the weekend a three hit shutout now 17 straight scoreless innings and he's done it largely with two things control and command but those are two words we often get confused so what is the difference between control and command well for me uh, control is the ability to throw strikes and a lot of pitchers can do that you'd like to think that all pitchers can throw a strike whenever they want command for me is taking into consideration the movement that you're going to have on the pitch as it gets into the hitting zone and keeping it out of the middle of the plate working around the edges of the strike zone and that's what Brandon McCarthy's been doing really well lately that he is absolutely a strike thrower so let's take a look now at uh, some examples of good command well we're going to start with bad oh, command sorry, bad actually command. you can see on the left against Troy Tulowitzki obviously a very dangerous hitter they want the ball away on the outside corner and down. You can see it's up high in the zone, out over the plate, and elevated as a danger zone against a power hitter like Tulowitzki. Now on this one, Angel Pagan from the Giants. Once again, the target on the outside corner and low. The pitch is right down the heart of the plate. Now that's a strike. That's good control. He threw a strike. However, big league hitters crush those kind of strikes. So control is the ability to throw strikes. Command is the ability to throw strikes within the strike zone? Within the strike zone or even without the strike zone if that's what you need to do in a particular situation. We know there's a lot of very aggressive hitters in the game. We're going to take a look at Ben Revere here from the Phillies. During that last homestand, that ball at the edge of the strike zone, up and away, he gets a called third strike there on Revere, and then on the right against Jimmy Rollins. Once again, target down and in. He starts the pitch off the plate, takes into consideration the movement, and puts it right on the edge of the strike zone for a quality strike three. Not a lot of room for error there. You're talking about two or three inches either way, right? The game is about millimeters uh, when you get to this level. But obviously, the more mistakes you make in the middle, the harder the ball is going to be hit. Even if you make a mistake around the edges with movement, chances are it's going to be weak contact. Brandon McCarthy is a strike thrower. We'll see him tonight with a consecutive scoreless sitting streak of 17 as he takes the mound here against the San Diego Padres. Home sweet home here at Chase Field. When we come back, Jody Jackson rejoins us. You're watching the Arizona Diamondbacks here on Fox Sports Arizona.
Chase Bank. Sending money is as easy as sending an email with Chase Quick Pay. The UPS store, flyers, business cards, brochures, and more, we can print that. And by BMO Harris Bank, the very definition of at your service. And welcome back to Chase Field. Roof open, ready to go for baseball here from downtown Phoenix. Jody Jackson with you from the field as we get set for first pitch. Now the Diamond stretch right now from May 17th until June 16th they only have eight home games and so time at home is precious time off is precious guys catching up with their families yesterday with an off day a couple of guys even going down out to the Salt River Baxter's ready to go we know that but now they're back here at the ballpark and they know how important this holiday homestand is obviously it's nice to play at home um, a lot but uh, we all know that there's gonna be times where um, we're going to have stretches where we're going to be gone for a long time. And, um, you know, to have a good weekend um, here and then the two games on Monday um, would be great going into a pretty long road trip. So um, we'll take one day at a time, you know, like the old cliche says, but uh, seriously do it and um, try to, uh, you know, um, play as well as we can. In four days, it starts tonight, the three-game series with the San Diego Padres, and then Monday's doubleheader against the Rangers. Stay with us. First pitch coming up. The guys in the lineup, they'll look to get to left-hander Eric Stoltz here tonight and get that offense going. A tie for first place. They're looking to increase their lead. Stay with us. d Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. For Diamondbacks baseball here at Chase Field, Brandon McCarthy with a consecutive scoreless inning streak of 17 as he steps to the mound to face Bud Black San Diego Padres. Diamondbacks have won five of eight, locked up in a three-way tie for the NL West lead, Bob. And this is the lineup for San Diego here tonight. Good idea to keep Evers Cabrera off the base as he leads the National League in steals this year. Kristen Norfia has been a Diamondbacks killer. Chase Headley always tough. This is a much improved San Diego Padres offensive line. Brandon McCarthy has thrown 17 consecutive scoreless innings so far. Here's our Arizona Ford Diamondback starting pitcher. Just two thirds of an inning shy of his career high set back in 2005. Has really been on top of his game lately. We chronicled in the open of the show. He just has tremendous command. Especially that sinker and the cutter. Everth Cabrera leads it off for the Padres. We're underway here at Chase Field. Cabrera 254, two home runs and 15 RBIs. 
He's behind here, 0 and 1. Everett Cabrera has hit safely in six of his last nine games since May 14th, batting 316 over that stretch. Keep him off the bases. He leads the major leagues with 18 steals so far. Two and one. Stolen bases are a big part of the Padres' offense. They trail only the Milwaukee Brewers. Read that correctly. Well, they actually lead the Milwaukee Brewers by one. Brewers running off a lot as well. Two and two now. This is inside three and two. Talked about the two-seamer and the cutter. Occasional straight changeup. Got a curveball and a slider. Uses those sparingly. Up the middle. That gets through. It's a base hit to lead it off for Everett Cabrera here. Right fielder, number Sale, the White Sox with the longest active streak. 23 innings. Justin Masterman, Rex Brothers, we just saw in Colorado pitching out of their bullpen, and then Brandon McCarthy with his 17 inning streak and counting. Here comes trouble. It is Diamondback killer Kristen Orphia. First of all, he's 10th in the league in hitting right now at 312, just behind Paul Goldschmidt, but he just tortures the Diamondbacks. Then Orphia leads all active major leaguers in batting against the D backs. Hitting 362 career against the Diamondbacks. And that's a big sample size, 116 at bats. 312 on the year, two homers and 15 RBIs. Keep a close eye over there and uh, Cabrera. 18 steals, he's been caught four times. There's the strike, 0-2. 116 at bats against the Diamondbacks. Dorfi has hit 362. Six doubles, three triples, eight home runs, 15 RBIs, and 32 runs scored. Go figure. Wow. He was a handful when we were at Petco Park early this month, too. On base all the time. That one's out of play. I mean, he's always been a good hitter, 280 lifetime coming into the 2013 season, but the numbers he's put up against the Diamondbacks, and we talked about it in San Diego earlier this year, either... Bad scouting report or bad execution of the scouting report. Cabrera holds. Dorfia chops it to short. Can they roll it here? Gregorius Pennington, and there's the double play. That's a little more like it. Denorfia hitting a ground ball right at, well, actually a couple steps to the right of D.D. Gregorius. Cliff Pennington looked like he slipped coming across the bag out there at second, lost his footing, was going down as he delivered that ball to Goldschmidt right on the money. How do you make an accurate throw falling down? Chase Headley down. It looked like he actually tried to lift his feet over Cabrera's head so they wouldn't collide or he wouldn't kick him in the head. <laughs> Survival instincts of those middle infielders. They know how close that base runner is getting, and that time, even though it was a very awkward attempt, Cliff Pennington got his legs up off the ground. He looked like a rocket out there. Paul Goldschmidt, McCarthy covers. 18 consecutive scoreless innings for Brandon McCarthy. That's a new career high. Bottom one on the way, no score. Here it checks.
roof open, panels open, just absolutely perfect conditions for Kirk Gibson and his team to take game one of this homestand. A.J. Pollock atop the order tonight. D.G. Gregorius in the two spot. Goldschmidt and Ross and Montero in the middle. Martin Prado and Gerardo Parra along with Cliff Pennington will make up the bottom of the order. Brandon McCarthy hitting ninth. Got to score some runs for Brandon tonight. Diamondbacks lineup brought to you by Scottsdale Healthcare. This is Eric Stoltz, and he is a junk balling crafty lefty. He's a crafty lefty. We're told he throws three different fastballs, a high four seamer when he wants to try to get some swings and misses. He throws a two seam sinker, a cutter. That's a big, slow curveball, a really good straight changeup. Don't it, expect too much. It's a four seam fastball that averages 87 miles an hour. And as Bob mentioned, that curveball is a slow, loopy curveball. But he has been very effective lately, and he throws the strike to A.J. Pollock to lead it off here in the bottom of the first. You see the miles per hour on these pitches. That curve comes in 67-66, and it looks like an EFIS pitch sometimes. And the key for Stoltz, just like uh, the key for Brandon McCarthy, is keeping the ball out of the middle of the plate. You can pitch at 86, 87 miles per hour with your fastball if you don't lead too many of them in the middle of that strike zone. In his previous start, which was against the Nationals on Saturday at Petco Park, Eric Stoltz took a no-hitter into the sixth inning. Pitched very well. This is there. One and two. No indication from Mike Malinsky down the first baseline. Stoltz finished that game by allowing only one run over eight innings, the deepest he's worked into a game since 2009. He got 11 ground ball outs. And he won with a steady parade of very slow junk. That's a foul ball. In that game against the Nationals, Stoltz did a really nice job mixing up his stuff. As Bob mentioned, he's got a slider. He's able to frequently sneak in that back door. That slow curveball, really effective. And the Nationals' Adam LaRoche admitted that a lack of patience on Washington's part sort of fed into Stoltz's success. Change up, slow curve, slider, spots the fastball. That's what works. And uh, so, Bob, I guess you have to stay patient. I know you probably want him to speed it up when you're up there because you're just used to that. But uh, I guess they have to tonight learn to stay back. And your natural tendency when a guy is throwing slower than you're used to seeing is to try to pull the ball. Geez, I can hit that one out of the ballpark. But the reality is if Stoltz is on his game, he's not going to make too many mistakes that you can really barrel up and hit to your pull field. So... Let the ball get deep into the hitting zone. Use a good quick swing. Spray it all around the ballpark. Three and two now to A.J. Pollock to lead it off for the Diamondbacks here. Struck him out. A.J. sort of bidding for a walk right there. You get a look at the side swing here. Yeah, he got it out there way too far. First pitch of the game for Stoltz is a strikeout. You look at a guy throwing the stuff that Stoltz has, you wonder how he strikes anybody out. I mean, uh, you know, we've all seen high school pitchers that throw harder than this, but he just has a real good idea of how to put the proper splits between his pitches and how to keep them out of the middle. Here's D.D. Gregorius, 348, three homers and eight RBIs. In the air toward left field, left center. Now it's coming in. Everett Cabrera is there. Two down. You have to go back almost a calendar year, but Paul Goldschmidt has had some good success against Eric Stoltz in the past, even though he had his camo on. Goldie saw him. (laughs) <laughs> he was able to spot him. <laughs> opposite field power. Took him out to the opposite field. That's the approach that will work against a guy that throws a lot of junk. Goldie at 316, 12 homers and 36 RBIs. You saw that OPS. Goldie third in the league with 36 RBIs behind only Brandon Phillips and Troy Tulowitzki. Third in the National League in both slugging and OPS, and the shift is on. Well, especially against a soft tosser like Stoltz, it figures that, uh, you know, even though Goldie's a guy that hits the ball from foul line to foul line, that he's probably going to get that barrel out in front against the Padres lefty, so they play a little bit of a shift. And he goes the other way. Right to Kristen Orphia, and that's the inning. We're through one here at Chase, no score.
defensive backs look as such. You'll see in the lower right there, defensive run save. That determines how many more or fewer plays a defensive player makes over league average. Diamondbacks at 39 defensive runs saved right now. That is by far the major league leader. In fact, the Rangers are the next best team, and Texas is only at 21. So the Diamondbacks, the best team in baseball by almost double at turning batted balls into outs. Carlos Quentin leads it off in the second here for San Diego. You know, partner, this may be the first time in his career that Carlos Quentin has ever been on a team where he's not leading the ball club in hit by pitch. <laughs> Who is that? Kyle Blanks and Chase Headley have both been hit five times. Quentin only four so far this year, but I'm sure he'll make up ground quickly. He does lead the team in charged pitching mounds, though. <laughs> And he served a suspension for that when he went after the Dodgers' Zach Ranky. although they did talk and sort of worked it out between the two of them, which was nice. Here's the 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two two. Quentin missed Wednesday's game for the Padres. He continues to fight knee issues. Had a cortisone shot in his left knee after he hurt the knee on an awkward slide on Monday. He is really slumping. Been a slow month for Quentin. In fact, it's been a tough start to the whole season. He hit 239 in April. This month, he's batting just 114, five for his last 44. Down the line, foul. And the reason we point out uh, the hit by pitch for Carlos Quentin, it was uh, somewhat of his specialty throughout his minor league career with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Had seasons of 27, 29, 31 hit by pitch. And it carried right on to the major league level, 114 hit by pitch in 702 games coming into this season. Stands right on top of the plate, hang, has his hands hanging out there over the inside corner and just refuses to give. Driven to left, Cody Ross is out there. And it's off the wall of the bullpen. It carries right to Cody. He fires it into second. And Quentin's in there with a double to lead off the Padres second. First baseman, number 23, Yonder Alonso. Well, that ball is smoked down into the left field corner. I think it's totally by accident, but Cody Ross ends up playing it perfectly. It took a couple of weird hops off the bullpen wall out there, and Cody got it back in quickly, but just a hair too late to get Quentin at second base. And Quentin, as we mentioned, with those knee issues, not running all that well either. Here's Yonder Alonzo. There's the strike on one. Alonzo at 280, six homers and 26 RBIs. He's hit safely in five of his last six games. Batting an even 400 over that stretch, including a couple of home runs. On the ground is short. It gets by Didi. Quinn had to hold up there, and they're going to wave him in anyway. Cody Ross picks it up in the gap. Quentin scores easily. RBI single for Yonder Alonso and the Padres take a 1-0 lead. That's his 27th RBI that leads the team. Hey, Yonder Alonso not necessarily a household name in Major League Baseball yet, but he will be. This guy can really hit. DD cheating up the middle just a little bit for the left-handed hitting Alonso, and he's able to slap it past him into left center field that time for an RBI base hit. That ends Brandon McCarthy's scoreless inning streak at 18 now. So it's a double and a single here in the second. Here's Jet Jerko, the second baseman. Alonzo has two stolen bases to his credit this season, so he might take off on you. There's the strike on one. Jed Jerko, 284, five home runs, 16 RBIs among the top rookies in the major leagues this year. He's done a really good job. Oh, and two. A couple of good pitches to start the sequence to Jerko here. Big curveball for a called strike, and then paints that outside corner with a two seamer.
Missed away there. One and two now. Jerko swinging a hot bat lately. He's hit safely in seven of his last nine games, batting 424 during that span. Last 27, 325. Nice block by Miguel Montero. Alonso stays put over at first. You know, we know the Diamondbacks have had a little bit of a revolving door at those middle infield positions, especially second base uh, with the emergence of D.D. Gregorius at short. But Padres have about as much consistency of those middle infield positions as you could possibly have. Cabrera has started every game this year for the Padres at short. Jerko has started all but two. Two and two. Out of play. Yeah, Cabrera, all 46 games started at shortstop for San Diego. First Padre shortstop to do that since Tony Fernandez back in 91. And Jerko has really settled in nicely at second. There is Everett Cabrera. Their shortstop and leadoff man. He'll do it again. Here's the 2 2. Jerko has not hit especially well away from Petco Park in San Diego. He's batting 345 at home this year, but only 213 on the road. So he likes the new ballpark. Struck him out. One down here in the second. Elevated that time. I think it's a good idea on Jerko just to give him a bunch of different looks. Don't stay in one pattern. Work in and out. Change speeds. That time an elevated fastball just off the inside corner gets the swing and a miss. So one on one out. Here's Will Venable. Venable getting the start in center field tonight. And it's been tough going for him offensively. Except in the power department. McCarthy misses inside there. One and oh. Venable at 228, seven home runs and 18 RBIs. Those seven homers leads the Padres this year. Only two behind his career high for a full season. One and one. But Venable batting only 189 over his last 10 games. They're waiting for Cameron Mabin to get healthy again. Get him back. On the ground to second. Pennington, can they roll it again here? Didi spins and throws. Venable beats it out. He's got good speed. There's too much to do and not enough time that time. Cliff Pennington obviously being a right-handed thrower has to turn his body to get that ball to D.D. The backspin by Gregorius clears the base runner, but as you mentioned, Venable runs extremely well. I have to keep an eye on him over there. He's 25 out of his last 27 in stolen base attempts. Eight steals this year. He's been caught twice. Here's the catcher, Nick Hunley. And Hunley is really fighting it right now. Trying to find that stroke. Two thirty-eight, three homers and twelve RBIs. Hunley slumping right now. He's hit 0 51 over his last 13 games. He's stuck in a two for 39 right now. Padres are probably hoping that returning this close to his uh, collegiate alma mater will get Nick Hunley jump started. Went to school down at the U of A. Second round pick by the Padres in 05. Broken bat. Prado cuts off the Gorgeous. They go the short way for the out, and McCarthy is out of the inning. But the Padres get a run. It's 1 0 San Diego.
Defensively, San Diego looks as such behind Eric Stoltz on the mound. Real good outfield defense. Quentin with the bad knees doesn't cover as much ground as he once did, but Venable covers a tremendous amount of ground in center field. Has a great throwing arm to Norfia. The same thing in right. Everett Cabrera just talking about him. He started in every game at shortstop so far for the Padres and has really solidified that leadoff spot. It'll be Cody Ross, Miguel Montero, and Martin Prado here. Four, five, and six in the Diamondbacks second, trailing one nothing. Carlos Quentin with a double, Yonder Alonso, an RBI single. It's one nothing Padres. Cody at 284, a homer and 13 RBIs. Getting the start in left field tonight. Taped a BBA a coffee show with Cody this morning and uh, got to talk a lot about rodeo. Yeah. His father was a chiropractor and a rodeo guy, which I thought was a great combination. A good marriage of two I professions, mean, yeah. How great is that? He can just you know stand there in the chutes and adjust guys, you know? And then eight seconds later, adjust them again. Yeah, yeah. Pick them back up, <laughs> fix the back again. It'll be airing later this summer on Fox Sports Arizona. There's the strike. Yeah, I had read somewhere a long time ago that uh, as a youth, Cody uh, dreamed of being a rodeo clown. Yeah, One of the he, guys that goes out and helps save the Cowboys. He used to dress up as a rodeo clown when he was a kid. Listed in the air toward right. Denorfi is underneath. One away. Unlike our director, Mitch Riggin, who dresses like a rodeo clown on road trips. Hello. Yeah, I know. The face paint, the whole thing, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Here's Miguel Montero. We're now on Mickey Pacific time. Checking in at 189, three homers and 14 RBIs. But I really think it would go a long way toward uh, making some of these games a little easier for the D-backs when Miguel gets going. Yep, there's no question. First pitch swinging. High in the air. Venable underneath in mid-range center field. Drifts over toward left, makes the catch, and two quick outs here for Eric Stoltz. Well, we talked a lot about Miggy falling behind in the count 0-2. He decides he's not going to allow that to happen tonight. Got a, actually a pretty good hittable breaking ball right in the middle of the plate. Just gets underneath it enough that it turns into a pop-up into shallow left center field rather than a line drive somewhere. Yeah, that was a little hanging nothing ball right there, and he just did get underneath it. Here's Martin Prado. Prado starting at third base tonight. There's a strike going one. He's in there at 232, four homers and 12 RBIs. Just two for 19 over his last five games. And it's funny, Bob, you talked about getting, you know, Miggy back on track. It, as soon as it looked earlier this month like Martin was headed in the right direction, a little bit of a backslide here. Saw that little hesitation as Stoltz backed his way up the front of that mound. He wanted that big slow curveball. Two and one now. Driven in the air to the gap in the right center. And off he drifts over in front of the pool. And it's a 1 2 3 second for Eric Stoltz. We're through two. 1 nothing Padres.
third inning here as Eric Stoltz, the Padres pitcher, steps in against Brandon McCarthy. Stoltz, Cabrera, and Denorfia, 9-1-2 and two here in the Padre third. They lead it 1-0. Quentin a double, Alonzo a single back in the second. That's how the Padres got their run. There's the strike going on. Stoltz 3 for 14 on the year. He does have a home run. And three RBIs. Good chance for McCarthy here to start an inning with an out and nobody on base. Cabrera led off the game for the Padres with a single. Quentin led off the second with a double, followed by the Alonzo RBI single. Good chance here to go. One out, nobody on if you can get the pitcher out. This guy does look kind of hitterish up there yeah, to use does. a Bob Renly term. Yes, he does. Yes. He even Looks wants like, a new bat and everything. It's like he expects something to happen up there swinging that lumber. Three for 14, a homer. He has five strikeouts, so oftentimes will make contact. Well, if you're going to act like a hitter, we're going to pitch you like a hitter. <laughs> Curveball that time to Stoltz, fouled off to the first base side. Up the middle, D.D. Gregorius is there behind the bag. One away. Shortstop, Edward Cabrera. As you might expect, a guy that runs as well as Everett Cabrera, bunting is a big part of his offensive arsenal. He'll probably try it at least once a game here this weekend. Singled his first time up. Prado on the edge of the grass at third. McCarthy missed there, 1 0. I think we need to put some kind of a GPS on Prado so we know is he at second, third, <laughs> left? <laughs> some kind of a homing beacon that sends out a signal. I mean, there must be times when he leaves the dugout after the Goes Diamondbacks hit that <laughs> he has a moment. Where am I going? That one's going to right. Toronto Parra's underneath. And two quick outs for McCarthy here in the third. Am I playing second today? Am I in left field? Or am I at third base? Where am I today? Right fielder, Chris well, the good news is it doesn't seem to matter where you put him. Defensively, he's been really good. That guy's been really good on both sides of the ball lately. And in the day off of the lefty on the mound, but we should see Eric Chavez here in the remaining two games against the Padres. Getting an extended rest with the off day. He was off on Wednesday as well. Denorfia hit into a double play his first time up. Two and zero now. This is the man known as Dino, and all his teammates insist he looks a lot like Inspector Gadget, which is actually right on the money. <laughs> he has been known to wear an Inspector Gadget T-shirt. Two and one. What is that? Go Go Gadget or something? We used to call guys Inspector Gadget when they wore a lot of gadgets, you know, an elbow guard, an ankle guard, foot guard, a couple of wristbands, three or four of those necklaces woven together. That, that's <laughs> Inspector Gadget. Here's the 2 2. High chopper to Edie Gregorius. Right off the ground, and Didi Gregorius makes a lovely play right there. It's a 1 2 3 third for Brandon McCarthy. Century Link, your link to what's next. Coming up, Parado Para, Diamondbacks down 1 0.
over the mound, but he catches it just an inch or so off the ground. He does the right thing. Charge hard. Uh, ideally, you smother it on that short hop, but Didi's so quick, he actually got there before the short hop, which made it a little bit of a tougher play, but recovers nicely and fires on to first for the out. He has such great instincts at that position. He is so smooth over there. That was a really, really hard play, and he made it look easy. Para Pennington McCarthy, 7-8-9 here in the Arizona third against Eric Stoltz. Gerardo in there at 304. Four homers and 12 RBIs. Out of play. A rare offensive dry spell here for Gerardo Para these days. He's gone hitless in three of his last four games. Just one for 16 with six strikeouts in his last four. One and one. These two have met before. This is last year. June 3rd last year, as a matter of fact. Gerardo Parra, once again, the camo not working for Stoltz that particular day. Opposite field home run for Gerardo Parra. Chopped on the ground to short. Cabrera, the backhander. And it's in time. Dueling defensive shortstops here today. Cabrera with a nice play of his own, smothering that ball in the short hop, firing on the move just in time. Good call. Mike Malinsky down there at first base. Here's Cliff Pennington now. Cliff getting the start at second tonight. 204, a homer and nine RBIs. 1 0. Pennington batting 143 over his last 11 games. Three for his last 21 up there with seven strikeouts. And he's seen his playing time reduced with Didi Gregorius at short. Martin Prado often playing second base when Eric Chavez is in at third. And as we mentioned, 143 over his last nine games, but he's had just a 14 at bats in those nine games. It's that catch 22. You, you really need to have regular at bats to feel comfortable and get into some kind of a rhythm as a hitter, but if you're not hitting, you're not going to get regular at bats. Well, you, you know, I pointed out all the time, Steve, many times the difference in safe or out at first base is the way the runner gets to the base. A lot of guys will lunge and hit the middle of the base with their foot. Para hits it with his toe. That's as quick as you can get to the bag, as quick a look as the umpire can get. Even though he was out on that play, that's exactly the way you want to do it. Popped up to third. Headley now Cabrera calls him off at short. And that's the second out. Eric Stoltz has retired all 80s faced here so far. Is there a danger, BB, that the umpire where he's positioned might not see the front of the toe hit the bag as opposed to having the foot on top of the bag? I think because of that angle, all they look for is that last step. And you may even come up an inch or two short of the base and can fool an umpire. But as I said, many times the runner in that last lunge, that last long step for the bag, they end up coming down with their heel right in the middle of the base. When obviously the quickest way to get there is your toe on that front edge just the way... Gerardo Parra did. Brandon McCarthy 0 for 17 this season. In fact, he is 0 for 26 in his career. In fact, there was a start earlier this year where Brandon drew a walk, and it was his first time on base uh, essentially since the dead ball era. You have to say he's due. <laughs> he's in a hitter's count here at 2-1. 3-1. Now we may be on the verge of walk number two here. Our crack staff, staff says he's never had a hit in the minor leagues either. So he's never had a hit. I mean, you'd probably have to go back to high school or little league. There's a strike three and two. Well, I remember us uh, saying that when he did draw that walk, it was very early in the year. It was his first time on the bases as a professional. <laughs> and he drives it to right. Oh, not a play. Looks like the Padres are expecting him to hit the ball that direction. Denorfia went very close to the line in right field, and Venable shaded over in the gap in right center, leaving Carlos Quinn to cover a lot of ground out there and left. 
Ball four. He's on base again for the second time as a professional baseball player. Brandon McCarthy is running the bases. First base runner tonight for the Diamondbacks. You know, we talk all the time about spray charts and looking at past histories and how you position your defense based on where you think a guy's going to hit the ball. Where do you play, guys, if you've never had a hit? Straight up. <laughs> A.J. Pollock struck out his first time up. A.J. batting 220 over his last 13 games. Drives it down the line and left foul. A reminder, every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season, Fulton Holmes donates $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. Diamondbacks down 1 0 here. Carlos Quentin led off the second with a double. Yonder Alonso's RBI single drove him home for the game's only run. Kind of surprising since Brandon McCarthy is such an infrequent visitor to the base pass that they're even holding him on over there at first base. I think that's more a byproduct of the fact that Stoltz doesn't throw hard and A.J. Pollock is more of a pull hitter than an opposite field hitter, so they feel it's okay to leave that hole on the right side, figuring there's very little chance that A.J. is going to hit the ball that way. AJ with some remarkable platoon splits this season. 253 against right handers, 254 versus lefties. Base hit. It gets in the right. Wide open, BB. There's the first hit for the Diamondbacks. Well, that's nice. You like to see AJ Pollock do that a little bit more. I think he feels he's at his best when he's pulling the ball, but this time gets a little fading fastball away from him. Realizes he's got that huge hole on the right side. Still not sure why the Padres were holding Brandon McCarthy. He had about a eight and a half inch lead off at first base. <laughs> Didi Gregorius now popped up to short his first time up. One and oh. Didi taking care of business presented by National Bank of Arizona. You can learn more about the amazing reward credit card at NBArizona.com. One of the top rookies in both leagues right now. What a start it's been to his diamond back career. And he drives it down the line and right. That's a foul ball. And A.J. Pollock was flying around second there. He would have scored easily on that one. That's one of the things that will happen against a soft tosser. You'll see a lot of hard hit balls just foul. I think a lot of that is by design for Stoltz. I, I talk all the time about Greg Maddox and why he was such a tremendous pitcher and will be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Maddox was willing to give up two Monster home runs foul to jump ahead in the count 0 and 2. Throw a change up off the plate inside and let the guy see how far he could hit a foul. 1 and 2 now. Well, Stoltz, because he is a soft tosser, will give up a lot of hard contact into foul territory. Didi Gregorius started this year 0 for 9, batting with runners in scoring position, but he is 4 for his last 7 with runners in scoring position. McCarthy on second, Pollock on first, Diamondbacks down one nothing here in the third. Here's the one two now. Didi had back to back three hit games on the last road trip. Had three hits Sunday in Miami, and then three Monday in Colorado. In the air to right, Denorfia started in, now backs up in front of the wall there. And he makes the outs. 
Diamondbacks get two on. They leave two. Their first hit of the game. It's one nothing San Diego through three. Diamondbacks are giving all kids 12 and younger a free ticket to tomorrow and Sunday's games. All you have to do is have an adult purchase a full-priced upper or lower level ticket, and the kid gets in for free. Call 602-514-8400. Stop by the Chase Field box office, or you can log on to dbacks.com slash kids and start your vacation outright. Free baseball. Got the doubleheader on Monday. I mean, come on, man. This is getting it down here. This is awesome. This is a place to be. Great weather. Roof and panels open tonight. A lot going on here. Reward the kids for a great school year. I'm sure they brought home straight A's. Bring them out to a ball game. Well, we know the Boy Scouts did. We got over 1,200 Boy Scouts here camping out, BB. On the field tonight. They're here at the game, and then they're going to camp out on the field all night long. Nice. Got a fireworks show. They're going to show Wreck It Ralph, the movie, up on the big screen. <laughs> it's like a big sleepover here. So 1,200 scouts. Nice job. I went as far as my Weeblow badge, and that was about it. I got close. We were talking earlier. I'm one merit badge away from Eagle only because I could never get my life saving merit badge. Chase Headley now. First pitch swinging. Center field. A.J. Pollock backs up right in from the 407 mark. One pitch, one out here for Brandon McCarthy in the fourth. What do you have to do for that? Do you have to actually save someone? Well, no. Because no. I can arrange to have a member of the staff, <laughs> one or two come to mind. We yeah. can just throw them in a pond or something. And I still wouldn't get my merit badge. I'd just let them sink. No, I mean, the only time they taught it was during the summer, and summer was baseball season. And, uh, you know, this was back in the day when there wasn't an indoor pool at every high school and middle school and uh, just had no time to take that life-saving merit badge. Carlos Quentin doubled his last time up. Now, my question for you is, does it, is it like getting a degree? Are you just basically one credit shy? Could we figure something out? Maybe we can have somebody go up by the pool. You can hey, save them, and then yeah. you can become an Eagle Scout. That, that works for me. <laughs> well, I've uh, been fortunate enough to be asked to present Eagle Scout awards uh, from time to time throughout the course of my playing or coaching or managing career, and it's always a great moment. Yeah, gun show. Owen two to Carlos Quentin. Last season, his first with his hometown Padres. Quentin at 261. Played in just 86 games. Battled right knee problems all year long. Surgery for a torn meniscus in the right knee last March. Just had a cortisone shot in his left knee this week. So he's uh, never been an especially durable player.
Right at Greg Schulte. The gub was ready on that one. I could probably get my life-saving badge if I ran over there and protected the gub. <laughs> yeah, gonna come back here. I'm... I was ready. <laughs> Tom Candiotti was ready. Two-two <laughs> count. Here's Leo Gilmartin and Candy in with the gub in the radio booth. Two-two again. Upstairs, three and two now. Yonder Alonso is on deck. He's driven in the game's only run so far. Ball four. Hey, are you between the ages of 10 and 14? Do you want to join Bob and me in the booth right here? Then you can come out this Sunday to Chase Field for Fox Sports Arizona and Sanderson Ford Kidcaster Auditions. What you do is go to the Sandlot between 11.30 in the morning and 1.30 in the afternoon, and you can audition, and then you'll wind up right here doing play-by-play -play with Bob Renly and I. So we hope to see you out here and up here in the booth this Sunday. Yonder Alonzo. First pitch high in the air. Tough Tony sky. Ross. Ooh. Do that. Boy, when that ball initially came off the bat, Cody just kind of started drifting over toward the gap. He knew about where it was, but he gave that universal sign, Second palms up. He wasn't Jenny quite Jenny sure he knew where it was, and then eventually he found it and made the catch. But scary moment there when that ball goes up. You know it's somewhere close to you, but you just don't have a beat on it. Chad Jerko struck out his first time up. McCarthy has retired six of the last seven he's faced. Hasn't given up a hit since the Alonzo single back in the second that drove in the game's only run. Jed Jerko led all major league rookies in the month of April with 23 hits. And he's Swung an even better bat this month. Chop to third. Prado will watch it go final. Jerko was probably the favorite non-Diamondbacks player for Ken Kendrick. Oh, because he's a he's a WVU, WVU, WVU guy. Yeah. yeah. Born in Morgantown, West Virginia, University High School there. Not only a baseball star, but a first-team All-State basketball player as well, Jed Jerko. And has uh, got an older brother who was a really good linebacker for the football team at WVU. Second-round pick by the Padres in the 2010 draft. Jed Jerko. Here's the one-two. He's hit safely in seven of his last nine games, batting 424 during that span. Well, if you are a college baseball fan, this is a great time of year. All the conference championships going on right now, leading up to the College World Series in Omaha. Fun time of year if you like college baseball. And since they changed the bats, it's become a really, really fun game to watch. Another one, two here. Missed outside, two and two. Jed Jerko, 247 in April, but batting 333 here in May, including five home runs. Sacks behind the protection there. Usually he's out exposed at first base. On the ground to second, Cliff Pennington is there. Easy throw to first, and that's the inning. Bottom four on the way. Diamondbacks trailing one nothing. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Coming up, Paul Goldschmidt.
Ram Trucks, proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. By Gila River, another proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And by Valley Honda, there's a great deal on every new Honda. Visit your Valley Honda dealer today or online at valleyhondadealers.com. Fun times at the Ram Trucks Pool. Great place to watch a game here on a beautiful night at Chase Field. Diamondbacks trail the Padres 1-0. Paul Goldschmidt, Cody Ross, and Miguel Montero, 3, 4, and 5 here in the Arizona 4th. Goldie flying out his first time up against Eric Stoltz, the left-hander. Looks at a strike, 0 1. Goldie won for his last 16. Had a somewhat quiet series in Colorado, 1 for 12 in the three games at Coors Field. First base, Yonder Alonso will take it himself. One up and one down here in the 4th. Speaking of the College World Series, we mentioned it the other day, Grand Canyon advancing to the D2 College World Series. They'll play in Cary, North Carolina against St. Edwards on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Good luck to Andy Stankiewicz and the Lopes. Go get them. Here's Cody Ross flying out his first time up. Cody's hit safely in five of his last six games. There's the strike on one. High up in the air. Hunley wants to play on it. The scouts are here. <laughs> This is more scouts than we've ever seen it again. Here's the 0-2. Struck him out. Two down here in the fourth. Of course, the scouts we're used to seeing here at the ballpark on a nightly basis don't wear uniforms. They're holding radar guns. Radar guns and stopwatches. I guess that's their uniform. Yeah, that looks like a scout. Pat Burrell on the right, former Philly star. Pat the bat. Here's Miguel Montero. 0 for 1, flying out to center his first time up. Miggy still digging out of the offensive hole, but he appeared to make some progress in Colorado. He played in two of the three games at Coors Field and went 3 for 9 with an RBI. And a multi-hit game against the Rockies on Monday, 2 for 5. His first multi-hit game since May 6th. Checking in with Paul Emmel. <laughs> it looked like Miggy said, was that one up in my face? <laughs> one and two. I like how he's stepping out and kind of slowing things down because so many times, Bob, during this skit, it looked like he's in a hurry to get the at bat over with. But he seems to purposely take a little more measured approach here and slow down the whole process. What do you think? It certainly looks like that's what he's doing. And you're right, there have been some at bats where he's seen three pitches and been on his way back to the dugout uh, before we even had a chance to say what his batting average was. So maybe. Uh, an effort here to just try to slow the entire at bat down a little bit. On the ground a second, Jet Jerko's there. And Stoltz has given up only one hit through four. It's one nothing Padres here from Chase Field.
Central leading Cardinals head to L.A. to take on Matt Kemp and the Dodgers. Baseball Night in America begins Saturday at 4 p.m. Let's go downstairs to Jody Jackson. Jody. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. I'm out here in right field with a Boy Scout troop from Queen Creek, Arizona. And as we mentioned earlier, they're staying the night here. I'm here with Mike Omen. Mike, I want to ask you a question. Bob Brunley said he never got to Eagle Scout. He never got that patch because he didn't, never had a life-saving merit badge. Can we fix that for him? Can you give him that opportunity? What can be done? Well, Jody, it's a little late for Bob. You've got to get your Eagle required badges by the time you turn 18. Um, Right here, you can tell, Bob, I didn't get it either, but we've got some help. We've got an Eagle Scout, an adult leader. He's got proof, and he can tell you exactly what you could have done. Okay, and, and you have that. What is your name? Uh, Dustin Plasto. Uh, Dustin, this is the Eagle Scout patch right here, right? After you become a leader, you don't actually wear the ranking, but uh, I do have the badge. Uh, I got it before I was 18. Uh, I did get my life saving as well. Um, and we do actually have a pool down here, I believe. So uh, if you do need your Eagle, uh, Eagle Scout still, you at least want to earn the, every, all the requirements. You can hop in the pool down there and save somebody's life. All right, Dustin, Mike, thanks a lot, guys. Bob, are you up for it? I don't know. These guys are willing to help you out, but I know you're a little bit over 18, so... <laughs> Sorry, Bob. There you have it. Go D-backs. <laughs> Maybe Thanks, some. Guys. Can we do some kind of honorary thing where you're presented with a Honor, sort of a, like a certificate, a certificate of letters or a doctorate? I'm sure we can come up with something. We just need to get him in a uniform again. Get him registered. You know, we'll help him out. Okay. So they're all up for honorary too. Great, great thinking, Steve. Good job. Let's let's talk dollars and cents. What's it going to take <laughs> to make this happen? I've got I've got almost seven dollars here. Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure not... my old Boy Scout uniform doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> you're not alone, Bob. Mike here doesn't have it either, but, um, you know, we tried. Paul Goldsmith on the short hop. Huh? One away, retires Venable to start the fifth. McCarthy's now retired eight of the last nine he's faced. We saw that ball splash in the dirt right in front of home plate. We just came from Miami on that last road trip. Uh, their infield instructor, Perry Hill, widely regarded as one of the best in the game. He said when that first hop hits the dirt, you should charge because the ball is probably not going to be hit that hard. You're going to need to make a, an effort to charge that particular ball. And that time, Goldie got a good read. That ball splashed in the dirt in front of home plate. Charged, fielded on the short hop like he always does. Great play. Nick Hundley, the catcher. And into a fielder's choice his first time up to win the second. Over the glove of Prado, it's a base hit into left. That's the fourth hit of the game for the Padres. Hey, fans, we invite you to play Kachinko by Good signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Walk away with a signed game piece and a chance to win the. Uh, a car, tickets, all kinds of stuff. Eric Stoltz, the pitcher, grounded a short his first time. One out of man on here in the Padre fifth. Shows bunt. Straight back to the mound. McCarthy to first. And Huntley advances to second with two outs. Miguel Montero hoping to come out of the shoot and make a play on that ball, but when he realizes he can't get to it, he not only yells first base, but points at first base and then immediately breaks down to help cover third if necessary. Two outs, runner in scoring position now for the leadoff man, Everth Cabrera. He has singled and flied out, one for two. He's hit safely in six of his last nine games, batting 316 over that stretch. Center. AJ Pollock drifting over toward left. And that's the inning. Padres get a hit. They leave one. Bottom five all the way. Diamondbacks trail it 1 0.
For Memorial Day, well, you should join us here. Chase Field, Diamondbacks and Texas Rangers for some interleague intrigue. Game one starts at 1240. First 5,000 fans get a snap back cap, courtesy of Budweiser. Before game two, which starts at 640, be outside for a street festival. There'll be music, a beer garden, food trucks all right outside here at Chase. Plus, when you buy a ticket for both games, you'll get free D-Bucks, and you can use those on merchandise and concessions. So call now, 602-462-4600, or log on to dbacks.com slash doubleheader. A big Memorial Day here, BB, on Monday. Oh, it really is. Uh, not quite an old-fashioned doubleheader where you play one game right after the other, but the next best thing, and maybe even better with the street festival going on between games. Our team Prado. Yeah, you're not going to just be hanging around. There's tons of stuff to do outside the ballpark between games. We'll spend the whole day and night with us here at Chase on Monday. And you, uh, Darvish, supposed to pitch in that game too. I have him winning the AL Cy Young. Prado, left field. Carlos Quentin in the game. One away. I'm just looking at the uh, Rangers roster here to see if they had anybody named Walker on the team, but they don't. So he'd be Walker, comma Texas Ranger. I like it. Right field. One of these days. Hey, check out the new grab and go outside section 104 here at Chase Field. A great place to find all your favorite Pepsi products. Just look for the scan, a chance to win great prizes. Find all your favorite Pepsi products at the new grab and go outside section 104 here. There's a Jody grabbing hey. and going. I, what, a, what a coincidence. <laughs> what are the odds? Nice staging. Here's Gerardo Parra. Parra grounded out his first time up. <laughs> Another reason to go to the grab and go, Bob. You could, you know, find celebrities out there. Chopped on the ground. That's a fair ball to first. Alonzo's there. Two down. Boy, Eric Stoltz is rolling along here. He's given up only one hit. He's walked one. Two strikeouts. When you think dominating pitchers, you don't normally think of a guy that throws, you know, mid-80s with his fastball and mid-60s with his curveball, but it just goes to show you if you can command those pitches, getting back to the open of the show, keep them out of the middle of the plate, change speeds, you can be effective. Four pitches, two out so far here in the fifth, and it's Cliff Pennington, the second baseman tonight. Popped up his first time up. Stoltz was picked up off waivers from the White Sox just about a year ago. And since joining the Padres, he's gone 12 and 6 in 23 starts. High in the air to center field, Will Venables there. That's a six pitch inning for Eric Stoltz. We're through five Diamondbacks. With only one hit, they trail it 1 0. Twitter poll, the early results, which team will win the NBA Western Conference Finals? Wow, a lot of Spurs fans out there. It's early, though. Still have time to vote.
set for the sixth inning here. Diamondbacks with only one hit. They've been out hit four to one. They trail the Padres one nothing. Carlos Quinton led off the second inning with a double. Came in and scored on a Yonder Alonso single, and that's the only run of the game so far. On a Friday night here, Chase. Denorfia, Headley, Quinton, two, three, and four here in the San Diego sixth against Brandon McCarthy. Denorfia, who just tortures the Diamondbacks, is 0 for 2 so far. So that's worked out. Brandon McCarthy's first career start against the Padres. First pitch swing and Didi Gregorius coming in. One away. That is the third time in three at bats to Norby has grounded to short. Brandon McCarthy so far staying out of the middle. Big loopy breaking ball in that outside corner. DeNorfia rolls over, hits that easy grounder to the left side. And once again, Didi with a great read, charging hard, smothered it on the short hop and threw on in plenty of time for the out. Chase Headley. I'm glad we showed that pitch because Brandon has been throwing more and more curve balls and cut fastballs as he goes deeper into games this year. From the fifth inning on, that curveball frequency spikes from 20% up to 40% of the time. So he's throwing twice as many curveballs as the game wears on. And the cutter frequency jumps up to more than 60% in the later inning. So he's mixing it up nicely. Behind here, 2-0. Oh. Green one. Ball four. Second walk of the game issued by Brandon McCarthy. Left fielder Carlos Quinton. McCarthy is a strike thrower. He will work within the strike zone. Beginning tonight with a strike percentage of 69.4. That is second in all of Major League Baseball behind only Cliff Lee. He's walked three batters or fewer in 68 straight starts. Third longest active streak in baseball. That's behind only Bronson Arroyo and Rick Porcello. Here's Carlos Quentin. Down the line, foul. Quentin's been on base twice tonight. Doubled and scored in the second. Walked in the fourth. With both pitchers in the game tonight getting a lot of early swings in the at bats. Once again, speaking to quality strikes. Pitchers can't, or hitters can't take them, rather. Don't want to fall behind in the count, but when they swing at them, they put them into play weekly, or in the case of that pitch, pull them foul. Let's see if we get some breaking balls here with these ahead in the count 0 1. It's been mostly two seam fastball, cut fastball through the early portion of his starts, but one of the keys for Brandon. Has been mixing it up, giving the opposing hitters a different look the third time through the order. And that's when he might put the sinking fastball away for an inning or two and go to more curveballs. Chase Henley has three stolen bases this year. He's been caught once. Shallow left, Didi going out there, and it drops in. Henley advances to second, Quentin aboard for the third time tonight. That's his second hit. No man's land out there in shallow left. Yeah, Cody Ross got fooled by the swing. Big, strong power hitter, and Carlos Quentin at the plate. Takes a full swing, but got jammed badly. Just hits that little floater out into shallow left field. Cody froze initially, respecting the power of Quentin. Didi hustling out there as best he can. Ball drops between them for a bloop base hit. That's a great example of Bapip and the things that were fighting Brandon before. He, just, he jams, he throws a good pitch, jams a pretty good hitter, and it just drops where no one is. And the things that go against a pitcher like that. Yonder Alonso, RBI single back in the second. He's one for two. Hard to center, A.J. Pollock. Has to jump up and get that one two down. That one.
Allen might have carried on him just a smidge. I'll tell you, we've seen a lot of good hitters already in the early part of this season, but uh, the, the times we played the Padres, Yonder Alonso more consistently gets the barrel on the ball of any hitter we've seen. Even his outs are usually hit hard. That ball, a line drive into center, very nearly snuck over the head of A.J. Pollock. Jed Jerko's 0 for 2. Drifting over to her left, makes the catch, and there's the inning. Padres get a hit, they lead to bottom six on the way. It's still 1 0 San Diego. Padres 1-0. FoxSportsArizona.com. All the online local sports coverage you just can't find anywhere else. There is Jack McGurder working on his game story for tonight's game. That'll be posted after the ball game. Diamondbacks underrated. Top of the charts defensively. You can read all about that. And Randy Hill previews Monday's Mercury season opener as the Phoenix Mercury with Diana Taurasi and Brittany Griner get set to open up their season. You can read all about that and more right now at FoxSportsArizona.com. Brandon McCarthy leads off the sixth here. McCarthy, Pollard, Gregorius, 9-1-2. and two. Still only one hit for Arizona. They've been out hit 5-1. to one. McCarthy walked his first time up. Efficiency. Yeah. We're used to seeing that from Diamondbacks pitchers, especially Patrick Corbin. A lot of very quick at-bats. 62 pitches, 41 for strikes. Stoltz had a long road to the big leagues, drafted by the Dodgers in 2002, kicked around their system for a long time. Pitched in Great Falls, Vero Beach, Jacksonville, Columbus. Chopped on the ground to third. Headley is there. One away here in the sixth. He spent the better part of four full seasons pitching for Triple-A Las Vegas and was routinely 500 an ERA somewhere Saturday high threes mid fours Made brief appearances with the Dodgers from 06 to 09 2010 the Dodgers finally gave up on him and his contract was bought by the Hiroshima Carp of Japan Central League There's AJ Pollock single back in the third Stoltz made 21 starts in Japan not a whole lot changed there when 6 and 10, the ERA over 5. Hooked on with the Rockies when he came back to the States. A couple of games in 2011. Last year, only six innings for the White Sox before he was waived in May. And that's when the Padres got him. And since he joined San Diego, he's been really good. Yeah. 
Hey, fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. They it, want tacos. Man, it's been a while. Only one time in the last 15 games. That was the first game in Miami on that last road trip. And remarkably, Bob, the Diamondbacks have done well over that span with pitching and defense. But no tacos. Yeah. That's the, that's the downside of the pitching and the defense. Thing. Winning games, losing weight. <laughs> Here's the one at two. Didn't go, says Mike Malinsky down at first. Eric Stoltz says a guy like me who's more finesse has to adapt and find ways to get guys out other than velocity. And it's worked out well here. The Padres and Bud Black let him pitch that way. And he said, I still think that's the way the game is playing. Keep guys off balance, change speeds. Base hit. Diamondbacks have two hits tonight, both by A.J. Pollock. Another one right back up the middle. His first base hit was through that hole in the right side. You can see A.J. spraying it around a little bit. I think he got a little bit pull happy there for a while. He was hitting all those doubles, especially those hustle doubles. Most of them coming to left center, left field, occasionally to center, but... One base hit to the opposite field and one right back up the middle tonight. 220 over his last 13 games for AJ, but he's two for three tonight. Here's DD Gregorius. AJ with five stolen bases this year. He's been caught twice. Didi's hit in eight of his last ten games, batting 333 over that stretch. Lifted in the air to center field. Venable backing up in front of the wall. He's got it. Pollock hustles back to first. Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie 0 for 2 so far. Now 1 for his last 17. He's got some unusual home road splits this year. 23 games at Chase Field. Paul batting 272. 24 road games, 356. Long look down to Matt Williams at third. Yeah, the only thing he could possibly be looking for is if A.J. Pollock had the stolen base sign over there at first. You're not going to hit and run with Goldie. You're not going to hit and run with two outs in the inning anyway. Ball's up there for one thing. Get a pitch to hit and drive it hard somewhere. But he does want to know if A.J. Pollock's going to be on the move. Stop at second. Two on, two outs for the Diamondbacks. That's their third hit here against Eric Stoltz. D-backs do a little better this time through the order of waiting back on all those off-speed deliveries by Eric Stoltz. This time a slow curveball down in the zone. Goldie timed it perfectly. Rips that ball back up the middle of the field. Even in that fifth inning when the Diamondbacks went down one, two, three, they had some pretty good at bats, hit the ball pretty hard. Starting to figure out Mr. Stokes. Good speed on the bases. Let's see if Cody can find a gap here. Cody Ross 0 for 2, struck out his last time up. One and oh. Cody batting 327 over his last 16 games. Pollock at second, Goldschmidt at first. It 
75 pitches for Stoltz, 49 for strikes. Here's the 1 0. One and one. Cody has stopped using the foot and leg protector. He had a broken foot last year in Boston, had something that fit over the top of his shoe. Then foul went off his shin here earlier in the year, so he had a two-piece shin and foot protector for that front foot, but the, he just said it just wasn't any fun to wear, so he's put it aside here. Three and one. Miguel Montero on deck. Cody Ross has a career homer against Eric Stoltz already. He hasn't hit a lot of balls right on the button lately. He's gotten his base hits, but many of them have been soft line drives or ground balls through the infield. Dangerous pitch coming here for Mr. Stoltz. Lifts it up in the air to left field. Carlos Quentin coming in. And that's the inning. Diamondbacks get two hits. They leave two. We're through six. It's one nothing, San Diego. Your link to what's next by Mazda. We believe. you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Jack in the Box, the Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. Back at Chase Field, our APS Energy All-Stars tonight, the two starting pitchers, Eric Stoltz and Brandon McCarthy, both have been outstanding here. A third straight start for Brandon McCarthy that he has been really good. Got to score some runs for him. Will Venable, Nick Hundley, and Eric Stoltz, 7 8 9 here in the Padres' seventh. Venable is 0 for 2. Hopped up in the air, left side. Didi in shallow left. One away. A lot of fly ball outs for Brandon McCarthy tonight. So either pop ups or fly balls. He's a ground ball pitcher. Catcher. But he's getting all his outs lately here, Bob, in the air. Hey, you mentioned uh, second, third time through the order, he tends to throw more breaking pitches, and uh, that could possibly be an explanation. Some of these Padres hitters getting underneath those off speed offerings. Take outs however you can get them. They got seven. Seven outs either by pop ups or fly balls since the start of the third inning. Nick Hundley singled his last time up. He's one for two.
Yeah, that was the seventh out in the air since the start of the third. McCarthy has gone at least six innings in each of his last six starts. He's gone through six and a third so far here. He's been over 100 pitches in two of those starts. His high for the season is 115. That was his second start of the year, a loss to the Pirates back on April 9th. Excuse me, Paul Goldsmith. It won't come any easier than that. Two down here in the seventh. Talk about a room service ground ball. Let Paul right to the base. It's very, very slowly. Just pick it up, step on the bag. That's about as easy as it gets. So Stultz, who's working on a three-hit shutout here, will bat for himself here in the seventh. You're talking about pitch counts for Brandon McCarthy in that complete game. His last time out, 99 pitches. He was really economical. He is a strike thrower. Brandon knows who he is and what makes him effective. He's always very clear about that, what his pitching identity is. And he says when he's pitching well, he's able to change speeds, not walk guys, and almost always be in the strike zone. And therefore, he's able to keep that pitch count down. Not a whole lot of three-ball counts. And he's not throwing more pitches than he needs to. He says if opposing hitters are putting the ball in play, his defenders are making plays behind him, then that works. He'll get deep into ball games, and we've seen that in this month. Out of play. Padres have lost two straight. They come in here having won 16 of their last 26. That's four games under 500. Bud Black and company four and a half games off that three-way tie for the lead with the D-backs, Giants, and Rockies. There's the strikeout. That ends the seventh. Brandon McCarthy, one run, five hits through seven. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Do up the Venezuelan trio. And Joe Borowski joins us here in the booth. here set for the start of the bottom of the seventh inning Joe Borowski joins us here and uh, Joe Eric Stoltz is a guy with an 87 mile an hour <laughs> fastball he's working on a three hit shutout what's he doing so well 
He's got the dime back hitters off balance. He's not putting anything in the middle of the plate. He's working both sides of the plate very well, changing speeds as much as you can change off of a, an 84, 85 mile an hour fastball. But he's not leaving anything in the middle for the dime back hitters to, to really get a hold of. He's just doing a good job of moving in and out, up and down, and, and he's got the dime back hitters out on their front foot a lot. It's a little bit of a tightrope act for a sure. guy like that. You, you, like you said, you have to stay out of the middle of the plate because you know if you do make a mistake over the heart of the plate, it's probably going to get waffled. Miguel Montero, Martin Prado, Gerardo Parra here in the Diamondback seventh. Five, six, and seven. Only three hits for the D-back so far. Two by A.J. Pollock. And anytime you're you're a hitter, you're a pitcher who doesn't throw very hard, you don't get a chance for mistakes like that. Lifted to right. Miguel Montero at one hops the wall and goes into the Padre bullpen. Ground rule double. It's Miggy time here at Chase. Time run aboard with nobody out in the seventh. That's his third double this year. Coming right at you. Got out in front of that one, been able to keep it fair this time. Hooking, hooking away from DeNorfia off the warning track and up and out of here. Or a book rule double. He's looked better today. He's looked more patient. Here's Martin Prado. Prado 0 for 2. He's flied out twice. Two for his last 21 up there. Prado trying to work it to the right side here, most likely. There he goes. Right on cue. Down the villa. He'll wave in Montero. He will score. Prado heads to second. Here and the Diamondbacks have tied it here in the seventh. I love it when you do the right thing and get rewarded for it. Martin Prado with that inside out slashing swing, just trying to move Miggy to third base, but this time gets himself a double, drives in a run, puts himself in the scoring position for Gerardo Parr. There it is, back-to-back -back doubles to start the inning here for the Diamondbacks. Each team now with five hits, and here is Gerardo Parra. Parra 0 for 2, he's grounded out twice. One for his last 18 up there. Joe, we should have had you up here in the second inning. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> David Hernandez warming up in the bullpen here. Interesting if they should find a way to get the lead here going into the eighth show. What do you think? McCarthy's pitched very well. And, and that'll be the question if they do get Prado in right here and, and Parra stays at first base, do you bring McCarthy back in and sacrifice Parra over to second? There's all kinds of scenarios going around here now. Padres bullpen. Busy. There in Thatcher. The law firm of Thayer and Thatcher. BB, I don't know. It, it, they've had great success lately leaving Brandon in these games. Would you factor that in at all if you're Kirk Gibson? Well, you certainly would think about it. Uh, but the fact that he was able to pitch so deeply into his last two games may enter into the fact that maybe you pull the plug early this time. We'll have to wait and see what Gibby and Charlie Nagy come up with. And this is following pattern for Stoltz. First plate appearance against an opponent. The batting average 217. Second plate appearance 276. Third time through the order, it jumps up to 373. Ooh. Para behind here, 0 and 2. Little chopper to short. Cabrera. They get the out at first. Prado into third. Close play there. Cabrera screened by the runner Prado. Well, that was a nice read by Martin Prado, the base runner at second base. That ball's actually hit in front of him, but it's hit so slowly he thought he had enough time to advance. And Parra, as usual, makes it extremely close down there at first. It's a good call that got him. Mike Malinsky, good call down at first. Cliff Pennington here. Go ahead and run 90 feet away with one out. Looks like 
Will Nieves is on deck, so this could be it for McCarthy. Infield in on the grass, looks at a ball, 1 0. Pennington 0 for 2, he is flat out twice. Bob, what do you uh, think about the contact play? Is there a right time, a wrong time? Depends on hitter. I think it, everything is subjective in the game of baseball. I think it depends on your base runner at third. What kind of jump is he able to get? What kind of speed does he have? A hitter at the plate, what kind of contact will he make? Is he a guy that's likely to drive the ball, or is he a guy that's likely to dribble it to the infield? Popped up right-hand side. Behind the Padre dugout, out of play. Two and one now. I think in this particular situation with the pinch hitter on deck already for the pitcher spot I, I think you have to see it get through Padres playing their infield in for me I'd like to see the ball get through before Prado tries to come down the line of third You have Chavez you have Hinsky on the Diamondbacks bench both left-handed So Nieves would be the pinch hit option here the righty against the lefty Stoltz now if it was a pitcher in the on deck circle and Brandon McCarthy indeed was going to stay in the ball game, then maybe you play it a little more aggressively and try to get that guy home on contact. Here's the 2 1. Driven down the line in left high and hooking foul. So Joe if you're Stultz knowing what he's got. 87 and a 60 mile an hour curveball. What are you throwing here? I wouldn't be surprised if he comes with a fastball in right here. With your infield in, you want a soft ground ball hit to somebody playing in the infield. If you leave it out over the plate, that's a ball that they can drive. So you want to try and jam him here. In the dirt. Hundley blocks it. It's gone full three and two. He had us the pinch hitter on deck. This almost feels like a pitch around. Even though yes. Cliff Pennington has not been one of the better offensive players for the D-backs this year, if you look at inning management, if you walk Cliff Pennington, it sets up a potential double play. So they're either pitching him extremely carefully or they just don't care if they walk in here. Hundley and Cabrera out there with Stultz. Stultz at 90 pitches now, 58 for strikes. Bud Black thinking things over here with Darren Balls in the pitching coach. Bullpen is busy. And a lot of times that goes through the pitcher's mind also. When you know you're not a strikeout pitcher, you're more apt to get contact. Yeah, you might pitch around that guy. Then you can set up the, the double play like you were saying, Bob. Ball four. First and third with one out now, and Will Nieves will hit. Will Nieves two for four with an RBI in his previous start. That was in Wednesday's game against the Rockies. And Will has done well in spots this year. He started seven games, and in those starts, he's gone nine for 25 with four RBIs. So whenever they've gone to him, he's delivered so far. And he's probably right now the best right-handed pinch hitting option on Kirk Gibson's bench. So that's it for Brandon McCarthy. Once again, pitched outstanding. Martin Prado, the go-ahead run at third. Cliff Pennington at first. A run in here in the seventh. It's 1-1. Each team with five hits. So Brandon McCarthy's turnaround season continues here. On the ground, foul right to Matt Williams. The old instincts kick in. Nieves originally a 47th round draft pick by the Padres in 95. Made his major league debut with San Diego in 2002. Chance here to put the Diamondbacks ahead with one out in the seventh. Uh, that's not his game. Will Nieves with a home run swing that time on a hanging breaking ball. Up out of the strike zone. That's just not the swing we're used to seeing from Will. He's got that huge hole on the right side of the infield with Alonzo holding on the runner. 
Jerko cheating close to second base in anticipation of a double play. In the air to the left. Carlos Quentin at the wall. And it's off the wall. Prado will score. They're going to stop heading to the third and Will Nieves. But an RBI double makes it 2 1 Diamondbacks. Will Nieves comes through again. I guess against the soft tossers, Will Nieves is a power hitter. <laughs> God, that one high in the air to left field. Looked like it had a chance to get out of here. Bangs off the wall. Ricochets past Quentin out there in left field. And Nieves is fired up out there at second base. Three doubles and a walk in this inning against Eric Stoltz and Bud Lack has seen enough, perhaps. Second and third, one out. Two runs in, two one Diamondbacks, and that's it for Eric Stoltz, who pitched a beauty here through six and then lost it in the seventh. We'll take a break. Pitching change. Diamondbacks out front, two one. Conditioning, cool play of the game. Will Nieves, a pinch hit RBI double, gives the Diamondbacks a lead. Prado scores the go-ahead run. Pennington stops at third. That's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning, cool play of the game. And now it's second and third for the Diamondbacks. One out. And the new pitcher for the Padres is the right-hander, Dale Thayer. He'll face A.J. Pollock here. Base hit. Pennington will score. Nieves stops at third. RBI single for A.J. Pollock, his third hit tonight. And the Diamondbacks take a 3-1 lead. Good to see somebody flip the switch on the D-backs offense here in this seventh inning. Got out in front of that breaking ball a little bit, but with the infield drawn in, it sneaks through for another RBI base hit. This is fun. Let's keep this going. Keep the line moving. And A.J. Pollock, who had only seven hits in his previous 13 games, is now eight for his last 13. So A.J. heating up big time. And that's it for Dale Thayer. One pitch. Thanks for playing. Bud Black going to go back to the bullpen. We'll take a break. 3-1 Diamondbacks back after this.
Communications and Fry's Food Stores is ready to take you to a Diamondbacks game. Stop by this month's participating Sierra Vista Cox retail store, and you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus. Take you to a Diamondbacks game June 9th. Registration ends May 27th. Don't wait. More information at FoxSportsArizona.com. New pitcher for the Padres, the lefty Joe Thatcher. He'll face Didi Gregorius here. Didi is 0 for 3 tonight. Three runs in in the inning. First and third, one out. There's the strike. No one won. And Joe, I think you're good luck up here. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This is reminiscent of many times I was brought into games. I could get a rally started with the best of them. <laughs> it's up to Joe Thatcher, unscored upon in 20 of his 22 outings. He's allowed only one run in his last 12 innings pitched. Nieves on third, Pollock on first. Three runs in here in the seventh. Didi shows butt right back to the mound. Play at the plate. And they get Willie Evis. That's the second out. Pollock to second. And Gregorius is aboard. Pretty nice play by Joe Thatcher coming straight in there on that bunt by D.D. Gregorius. I don't think this was a planned bunt. Thatcher usually ends up with his back turned toward home plate, but managed to recover in time. <laughs> Backhanded flip on to Nick Hundley, who had the plate blocked on Will Nieves. And Bud Black is going to match righty, lefty, and now righty. So Thayer throws one pitch. This is amazing. Thayer threw one pitch. Thatcher threw one pitch. And that's it. We'll take another break. Another Pondre pitcher on the way. It's still 3-1. Three runs in in the Diamondback seventh. They lead at 3-1. Tomorrow's Probables now brought to you by Chevron. We'll be back here tomorrow night. 7-10 start. Andrew Kashner, the hard-throwing righty, faces Wade Miley. Nothing soft tossing about Andrew Kashner. He hits triple digits. Big time fastball. Anthony Bass allowed an eighth inning grand slam in his second inning of work on Tuesday when the Padres lost to the Cardinals 10-2. He'll come in here with two outs and men on first and second to face Paul Goldschmidt. Fastball slider changeup combination from Bass. He throws uh, off-speed pitches about half the time. Fastballs 50%, sliders and changeups about 50%. In the dirt, 1 0. Goldie is 1 for 3, single his last time up. Looks like he's going to extend Bass here beyond one pitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thatcher threw two, and Thayer threw one, but one batter, and Bud Black is matching him up. Righty, lefty, righty. One oh on the way. There's the strike, one one. AJ Pollock, the runner at second. DD Gregorius at first. Seven hits now for the Diamondbacks, five for the Padres. Three runs in in this inning.
Look out, two and one. Goldie third in the league in RBIs behind Brandon Phillips and Troy Tulowitzki. Third in the league in both slugging and OPS. He's also walked 25 times. He's sixth in on-base percentage. He's ahead here, two and one. Out of play. Joe, what's the best way to pitch to this guy? You got to mix it up with Goldie. You can't stay in any type of patterns. You have to go soft, hard, in, out. If you if you make a mistake against him, he's going to make you pay for it. So you have to make sure that you have conviction in your pitches and you have to locate. He drives it to the gap and left center. That gets down. It's off the wall. Pollock will score. Here comes Dini. Two runs are in. A two-run double for Paul Goldschmidt. And the Diamondbacks have broken open with a five-run seventh. Middle cut fastball that time for Goldie. Quick to the ball, as always. Line drive to that gap in left center field. And he's waving him around. Keep that right hand moving. D.D. Gregorius comes rolling around. He's going to score easily without a play at the plate. Getting a little help from the bench there, too. A lot of associate third base coaches. <laughs> Cody Ross, ninth diamond back to hit in this inning. Let's go. We need one more for tacos. Ah, there you go. I like the way you think, Joe. Cody is 0 for 3. Foul down the line. 0 and 2 now. Miguel Montero doubled. Martin Prado doubled. That tied the game. Para grounded out. Pennington walks. Nieves a huge pinch hit RBI double. A.J. Pollock RBI single. Gregorius reached on a fielder's choice. Two run double by Paul Goldschmidt. Five runs in in this inning. Here's the 0-2 to Cody Ross. Upstairs one and two. One thing working in Bud Black's favor as far as his bullpen goes. Uh, he got a big performance from Tim Stoffer on Wednesday. Five and two-thirds innings pitched out of the bullpen in relief of Birch Smith, a rookie, making his major league debut. So everybody else uh, pretty much got the day off, much like Josh Colmenter did earlier this year for Gibby. Well, guys like that can really save your bullpen. One and two now. Lost the bat. Bass flips over, and that's the inning. The Diamondbacks send nine men up there. They get five in the seventh, and it's now suddenly a 5-1 Diamondbacks lead as we head to the eighth to chase.
the special D-backs doubleheader as we honor the sacrifice made by the brave men and women in the military. Salute to the troops brought to you by Sanderson Ford. Coverage begins at noon with second game coverage starting at 6 o'clock only on Fox Sports Arizona. Leading off for San Diego. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks is David Hernandez. He'll face the top of the order here with a 5-1 lead suddenly to start the eighth. Yeah, David's been on quite a roll of his own lately. Seven straight scoreless appearances, seven innings over that stretch. You see the numbers for David this season, making his 21st appearance. Eruth Cabrera leads it off in the eighth. He's one for three, singled his first time up. Oh one one. David Hernandez last worked on Tuesday night against the Rockies in Colorado. One hit in one scoreless inning. And as Bob mentioned, unscored upon now in his last seven appearances. That's right about the time he started throwing that slider a lot more than the old power curveball. I was just going to say, Bob, we've seen a lot more breaking stuff and off-speed stuff from David Hernandez. It's not all just hard 95 all the time. He's really mixed it up. Misses there. Over those last seven appearances, David has given up only five hits against six strikeouts. The opponents batting 185 against him. Four seam fastball averaging 95 miles an hour, throws that about 60% of the time. The curveball, 35%. Yeah, Cabrera up, drives it hard to right. Power looking up, and that ball is in the pool. Everett Cabrera, his third of the year, a solo shot here to lead off the eighth, and it's 5-2. They throw it back from the Ramtrucks.com pool. No thanks. I know Buddy Black expects a lot from Everett Cabrera, but hitting home runs is not one of the things that he normally expects. Boy. Middle cut fastball. You could see David's reaction out there. That ball tailed right back to the inner third of the plate. Heads up out there in the pool. Can't be texting out there. You never know when a ball's going to come flying out at you. See, if I was out there at the pool tonight and caught that ball, would I get my life-saving merit badge for saving the people at the pool? If you threw yourself in front of an <laughs> unsuspecting fan, we might be able to work something out. I still say we just bribe them. An envelope of cash. That always works. Chris Denorfio over three. He has grounded to short all three times. Now, if someone had gone into the pool to retrieve the baseball and you jumped in, as I did earlier this year while you watched and stood by <laughs> doing nothing, uh, then maybe we could work something out. <laughs> Swing and a miss, one and two. I was actually one of the first to go in that pool. So yeah, you've you have already paid, had that on the resume. Paid my dues. Yeah, I don't blame you. Here's the one-two. Center field. AJ Pollock drifting over toward right. Run away here in the eighth. Well, the good news is David Hernandez had a little bit of wiggle room thanks to that explosive seventh inning. Diamondbacks offense suddenly uh, got their wake-up call. Pounded out five hits, scored five runs. Chase Headley, 0 for 2, walked his last time up. There's the strike. Good crowd here tonight, 24,043. Great walk-up crowd. People getting on the bandwagon here. We sold nearly 3,000 walk-up tickets tonight. So fans coming in here to join us on a Friday night at Chase. It's going to be a big weekend here. We hope to see you out against the Padres and the Rangers, that big Monday Memorial Day doubleheader and the street festival in between games. So a lot going on here all weekend long at Chase. Memorial Day Monday. Will you be out, Bob, uh, wrestling bears or anything during the street festival? If there's any bears out there to be wrestled, sure. <laughs> a lot of haughty talk about wrestling a gator when uh, we were in Miami. Yeah, we 
should point out that doubleheader on Monday. If you can't come to both of them, you can try to make it to one or the other. I mean, sure. we'd love to have you out here for both ball games. It'd be a great day of baseball, but one or the other. Struck him out. Two down here in the eighth. And don't forget, you Darvish is supposed to pitch. It's the first game Darvish is pitching? I think so. So you want to be out here for both if you can to see Darvish pitch that first game and then check out the street festival and come right back in here for the second game. Carlos Quentin has been on base three times tonight. Single and double and walk. He's two for two. Well, if he throws that slider enough to really put it in guys' heads and then humps it up to 95, 96, he can be a handful. It just seems like he has better command of that slider than he did of that power curveball, which uh, just by definition, he throws extremely hard. Slider is a little more of a finesse breaking ball. He's been able to throw it to both sides of the plate. It's been a really effective pitch for him. Just heard the phone ring out there. Glenn Sherlock was on the phone, and there is Brad Ziegler. A lot of these guys haven't pitched in a while. And the efficiency of the rotation has been so good over the last oh, 10 days, two weeks, that uh, bullpen, which was absolutely gassed when we came back from that first long road trip, now look maybe a little rusty. Well, obviously, that's a situation you would much prefer, trying to find work for the guys in the bullpen rather than just calling down there and saying, who can give me an inning? <laughs> Diamondbacks live coming up after the game here. Here's the one two in the dirt two and two Carlos Quinton of course first round pick by the Diamondbacks back in the 03 draft It's been two big league seasons here played only 138 games hit 230 with 14 home runs This fastball around right down the middle, mid 90s, and Quentin is all over it. Quick swing down into the left field corner. He had struggled with breaking balls earlier in the count. All over that heater. Charles Nagy will have a conversation with David Hernandez. And in fact, the whole left side of the diamond back infield here. Andre Alonso is up now. Alonzo is one for three, had an RBI single back in the second, drove in what for a long time was the only run of the game. Brad Ziegler continues to throw. And here comes Paul Emmel to break up the convention out there. Andre Alonzo has now hit safely in six of his last seven games, including a couple of home runs. Oh, hi. Just having a meeting. Brad Ziegler continues to throw. Alonzo, really good looking hitter. He is right handed, Yonder Alonzo. Throws right handed, and he says uh, the only thing he does lefty is hit. Boy, and he does that. You mentioned the base hit back in the second inning to drive in Padres' first run of the game. Then a deep fly ball to left for an out, and a screaming line drive to straightaway center for an out. Yonder Alonzo, he said his dad played baseball, and he always thought Yonder would have an advantage if he hit lefty, so that's the way he was brought up. Throw righty, hit lefty. His father was a great baseball player in Cuba. Played and coached for the Industriales Club. That's the top team in Cuba. In the air to center, A.J. Pollock coming in! A.J. Pollock's had himself a night. Bottom eight on the way. Diamondbacks lead it 5 2.
Ram trucks, the Diamondbacks with a five-run seventh. They had four doubles in that seventh inning. Just the fourth time in team history, Bob. They've had four doubles in one inning. Gotta love that. Last time was uh, 2010 against the Blue Jays. The other two times it happened, they lost the game. Back in 06 and 02, both times against the Rockies. That's our Ram Trucks. Tools of the trade of the man who started off that big seventh inning. Starts off the eighth, Miguel Montero. He led off the seventh with a double, his third double of the year. Get throw. Look at Jim Jerko. What a play. Takes a base hit away from Miguel Montero. Stop it. That's what Mickey's got to be saying. Yeah, that should have been a base hit. Boy, Turco quickly got to that ball and unloaded it. Barely gets to his feet, just plants that right foot and fires onto Alonzo at first and plenty of time to get Mickey for the out. Martin Prado and RBI double his last time up. The Padres made the decision over the winner to move Jerko from third to second. So he's been all spring training, taking every rep at second base. A lot of grounders on the backfields with Glenn Hoffman. And you just see the work paid off. There's Jed Jerko again. Two up, two down here in the eighth. MLB.TV celebrates 11 years with new low prices. You can watch every out-of-market game live on over 350 supported mobile devices or in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. It's baseball everywhere. Two ground ball outs to Jed Jerko here in the eighth, and it brings up Gerardo Parra. Parra 0 for 3, grounded out his last time up. And there is a little bit of a market correction here going on with Gerardo Parra, who has just had a sizzling bat to start the year. But he's now one for his last 19. So coming back down to earth just a smidge here. And the recent skid offensively, Bob, comes right after he hit in seven straight. I think it's all part of the adjustments of the game that you go through over the course of the season. You're going to have stretches of the year where you're red hot. Teams look at the videotape. What have you been hitting? Where have you been hitting the ball? They adjust their defense. They adjust the pitcher's pitches that they're throwing to you, and then it's up to you to make another counter adjustment back and forth all season long. One and two now. Ara had that seven game hit streak, batted 464 over those seven games, but now stuck in a one for 19 skid. He's gone hitless in three of his last four. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Two and two. Upstairs three and two checking in on the Diamondbacks bullpen things are changing down there Heath Bell is warming up, and it's been a while. He has not pitched since last Wednesday That's a long time for the guy who's your closer. He's warmed up a bunch. He just hasn't been in a game Bass loses par a two-out walk par is aboard for the first time tonight that brings up Cliff Pennington Cliff is 0 for 2, walked and scored his last time up. We thought we might see Heath Bell, of course, in Miami, the former Marlin. There are all kinds of drama associated with that. Now that's a good look right there. <laughs> that is outstanding work. But Heath did not pitch in any of those Marlins games because the starting pitching was so good. Notably, uh, Brandon McCarthy threw that three-hit shutout. And then in the Rocky series, he just never came up. Although he was warming up, as Bob mentioned.
Cliff Pennington only switch hitter on the roster. 246 against right hand pitching. 128 versus lefties. Tell you, partner, has a good chance to be a great night for the organization. South Bend won earlier today. Visalia leading 4 2 in the bottom of the sixth inning against Rancho Cucamonga. Mobile beat Mississippi, and the Reno Aces are up 5 4 over Tacoma in the bottom of the sixth. Boy, Tyler Skaggs pitched a beauty the other night for Reno. Really good. That was great to see. Here's the 1 0. 1 1 now. You know who else pitched well yesterday was uh, Daniel Hudson, uh, pitching for the extended spring team over at Salt River Fields. Went five innings. Gave up four hits, seven strikeouts, did allow two runs. I happened to be over there to watch uh, Daniel pitch. Looked really, really good. Nice and smooth. Ball was coming out of his hand well. Velocity was good. That's a good sign. Well, you get him back, and then you really have something going. Here's the 1-1. Throw over. And I know it's tough for Daniel to sit and watch and listen to us on the TV. And he misses the road trips and hanging out with the guys and everything. Been a long road back from Tommy John, but things are really going well. So maybe even just before the All-Star break, fingers crossed. There goes Barra. Pennington shows bump. There's a strike throw in, and they got him. Nick Hundley throws out Gerardo Parra. Parra caught for the seventh time this year. <laughs> a little frustrated right now. And we'll go to the ninth. Diamondbacks lead the Padres 5-2. Here comes Heath Bell. Since last Wednesday, the Heath Bell experience. Six out of eight in saves this season. See that first batter efficiency. You'd like to see that number be a lot higher for your closer coming into the ball game. Almost half the time that first runner has reached against Heath Bell, many times on doubles. <laughs> yeah, he had a stretch true. of three games in a row where he gave up a double before ultimately getting the save. He'll face Jed Jerko, Will Venable, and Nick Hundley here. Six, seven, and eight in the Padre ninth. Jerko is 0 for 3. Hard four seam fastball, power curve from Heath Bell. Longtime Padre closer now in there against San Diego to lead off this series. There's the strike on one. Heath Bell dominant in his last two outings. He saved the last two Diamondbacks wins in the series against the Braves here at Chase Field. Fastball velocity is up a tick, averaging over 93 miles an hour. And the curveball has become more frequent with every outing. 0-2. Oh and, and with the exception of the one appearance in the finale against the Phillies here, he has looked to be... His old self with that curveball, sharp and crisp with a big drop. 
Last six appearances, five saves, five and two-third over that span. Two runs and seven hits with five strikeouts. Right to Didi, and he goes top shelf. One away here in the ninth. Upstairs where Mama hides the cookies. <laughs> Ball was struck well. Bell tries to come in with a fastball. Jerko's all over it, but so is Didi. Good ups out there at shortstop. And, you know, if he doesn't catch that, that might be another double. Could be a double, yeah. <laughs> that ball was hit pretty hard. Gets in that gap in left center. So one away here is Will Venable. Venable is 0 for 3. But he fell. He can't get there. Pennington can't get it. And Venable's aboard on the bunt hit. That was in a tough spot there, Bob. Yeah, good location. I mean, Venable even squared around a little bit early to make sure he got that ball on the first base side just by a diving Heath Bell. And with Will Venable's speed, that's an easy base hit. So one on, one out. And here is, well, hold on. We're going to have a pinch hitter here. This is the little ninja coming up. Number five, Alexi. It is Alexi Amarista. He will hit for the catcher Hundley here. Alexi Amarista has hit in three of his last four games. Five for eight over that stretch with three RBIs. Two for 12 is a pinch hitter this year for Bud Black off the bench. And Mark Kotze, another left-handed pinch hitter, has moved into the on-deck circle and would hit for the pitcher spot should we get there. In 13 games since May the 7th, Alexi Amarista batting 382 with eight runs scored. Came over from the Angels last May in the trade for Ernesto Frieri. Two and zero. Oh. Venable eight stolen bases this year. He's been caught twice. Heath Bell unscored upon in 13 of his last 16 appearances. Just two walks and 20 strikeouts over that span. He's two and zero oh with five saves. He's behind here, three and zero. Oh. I wonder how much that diving effort took out of Heath Bell trying to get to that Will Venable bunt on the right side. He went down hard. On his stomach as he tried to field that bunt. Just can't find the strike zone here. And you want to be careful here because should Amarista get aboard, Kotze is the tying run at the plate. Ball four. <laughs> Charles Nagy will head to the mound. You need to be careful with Mark Kotze. He is a veteran and he can hit. Kotze is a pinch hitter this season. Five for 15 with a double and two RBIs. He is a career 301 pinch hitter. Those are the career numbers. Five home runs. Veteran bat off the bench over his last eight games. Kotze is batting 353. And he is now the tying run at the plate with one out here in the ninth. Paul Emmel to the mound. Tired Diamondbacks infield is out there. And that'll break up the meeting. Mark Kotze, first round pick by the Marlins back in 96. Last year, 259 in 82 games with a couple of home runs. This is his 17th year in the major leagues. And usually comes off that bench looking to ambush the first fastball he sees close to the strike zone. Tying run at the plate for the Padres. One out here in the ninth. Good speed on the bases. Venable and Amarista. There's a the ball 1-0. Heath Bell is really struggling to find it right now.
There's the strike one and one. Trouble brewing call Brad. Up for the second time tonight. Bob, how much of this do you think might be rust? We mentioned Heath has not pitched in over a week here. It's been about nine days. I don't know how much of it can be attributed to rust. I really think diving for that bunt affected him more than anything else. He just couldn't get the ball back down into the strike zone until the last two pitches here to Mark Kotze. Might have knocked the wind out of him a little bit. Miss there. It's two and two. Oh, what a good spot to miss, however. Either you hit that outside corner at the knees or you miss farther away and down. Even if Kotze swings at that pitch, he's not going to do anything with it. That's an Adrian Johnson strike, by the way. Oh, yeah. As we saw in Colorado. Two and two now. <laughs> Out of play. Nice catch by the fan right there behind the dugout. Is that contract worthy? I think it is. He caught it on the fly. Let's see. You judge. Yeah. And a guy behind him. He kind of had a fight off. Oh, phone's blowing up. Dude, they totally just showed you on TV. We'll do it again at 2 2 here. Venable on second, Amarista on first. This would be a big one to win for the D-backs. Don't even want to think about losing this ball game, but a loss would put them in an even 500 here at home. Each team with eight hits in the game. Diamondbacks were down one nothing. They got a five-run seventh. Padres answered with one in the eighth on an Everth Cabrera solo shot against David Hernandez. Here's the two-two again. Out of play. This is a veteran big league at bat right here. Now this is very similar to the reason the Diamondbacks got Eric Chavez and Eric Hinsky in the offseason. Those veteran guys that know how to work in at bat, especially against some of the best relief pitchers in the game. You're only going to be facing the best setup guys and closers most of the time in these late inning at bats. A big out, two down here in the ninth. Conte retired. Here is Cabrera. Shortstop Ever Cabrera. So it's Everth Cabrera time. Now he's the tying run at the plate for the Padres with two outs. Single in the first, homered in the eighth. The home run is third of the year. There's the strike on one. This was Everth Cabrera his last time up eighth inning against David Hernandez something you don't see a lot of from Cabrera you'll see him get base hits steal bases make great defensive plays but saw a rarity tonight a pulled home run into the pool in right field he does that again it's a tie game here D-back nation on its feet here's the 0 1 foul ball 0 2. 
Oh, infield came charging in on that one. They're fired up here, Chase. Big weekend here. Two more against the Padres, then two against the Rangers on Monday, the Memorial Day doubleheader. Hope to see you out here this weekend. Your first place Diamondbacks. Heath Bell a strike away. Cabrera is a switch hitter. Batting 280 from the right side, 244 is a lefty. Wow, he does not want the Diamondback game to end. Here's the one two. Did not go, says Gary Darling, the crew chief at third. Good call. Able to check there on that breaking ball in the dirt. Two two on the way. It's full three and two. Chris Denorfi, a Diamondback killer, is on deck. And that's a guy you would just as soon not mess with. No one in the major leagues has a better career batting average against the Diamondbacks than that guy right there. Venable at second, Amarista on first. Here's the three two. Runners go. Little chopper to Paul Goldschmidt at first. That's a fair ball. He covers and the Diamondbacks win it. Heath Bell strands two and the Diamondbacks, who began the night in a three-way tie for the National League West lead, put a W in the column here, Bob. Good win, good win. They go to 13 and 11 here at Chase Field. You don't like to end too many games with Heath Bell in a foot race with Everett Cabrera, but this time the Heath Bell experience comes out on top. It's all part of the Heath Bell experience, and the Diamondbacks have now won six of their last nine. We'll see how the Giants and the Rockies are doing. Let's uh, go out to the post game set for the latest on this National League West race in your first place, D backs. Guys. Steve, thank you. Joe Borowski. Before we get the show underway, Shop Talk here, the A Block, the top of the show. It's your call. So when we come back from break, what will you lead the show with? Will it be Brandon McCarthy and his performance or an offense that put five runs on the board late? Offense impressive, especially coming off that road trip. A lot of miles covered. They came out a little, a little lackluster, turned it on. But Brandon McCarthy's the story. Three strong outings in a row. We're going to break him down. You're, you're waffling here, though. Which one is the lead? 